Welcome back to Golf Extra. It's universally acknowledged in the golf world that major tournaments are difficult, but there are some golfers that just make them look easy. We're talking about those performances that are just head and shoulders above the competition and historic in nature. So, what golfers were this successful, and how did they play at the highest level under the historic pressure of golf's biggest events? Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more videos just like this one. Now, let's get right into our list of the most dominant performances in major golf tournaments. Tiger Woods, 1997 Masters. The golf world was a very different place in 1997. Golfers like Tom Kite and Greg Norman were the class of the field, with some of the senior players of the tour like Jack Nicholas and Arnold Palmer still competing. Everything was about to change, though, with Tiger Woods' entrance onto the world golf stage at the 1997 Masters. Not only did Woods win the tournament, but he also dominated at a level that had rarely been seen at the major tournament level. At only 21 years of age, Tiger Woods won his first major with a stunning score of 15 under par at the foreboding Augusta National Golf Club. The score was so dominant, Woods beat the rest of the field by a whopping nine strokes. This was made even more impressive by the fact that it was the first time Woods had even led in a major tournament. It wasn't just impressive to fans, though. Tiger even impressed himself. After the tournament, he said, I never thought I would have the lead like I did. You envision dueling it out with Faldo or Nicholas or Watson, someone who's always tough to beat down the stretch, or birdieing 16, 17, and 18 to get into a playoff, but never in the fashion I did. That's something you dream of. It's kind of nice that it became a reality. Even all-time great Jack Nicholas paid homage to Woods and his all-time great performance, saying that he's out there playing another game on a golf course he is going to own for a long time. I don't think I want to go back out and be 21 and compete against him. Who knows? We might even mention him again in this video. Bobby Jones, 1929 US Open. Let's go back in time to a performance that true golf fans know well, but that those new to the sport might not be so familiar with. In 1929, Bobby Jones was one of the most dominant golfers in the world, but he wasn't even a professional. He had won the U.S. Open twice previously as an amateur to go along with two British Open championships and several U.S. amateur titles. Going into the 1929 U.S. Open, though, Jones still had quite a bit of pressure on him. He led after one round but struggled in the second round, falling back to even par. He regained the lead after the third round, but suffered through a final round collapse that left him needing an 18th hole miracle in order to force a playoff. After some crafty work on his approach shot, Jones had a testy, hard-breaking 12-foot putt to tie for the lead following the final round. You probably can guess how it went. Jones sunk a swerving left-to-right putt on the dastardly winged foot green. Long known as one of the most famous shots in golf history, writer Grantland Rice called it the greatest single putt I had ever witnessed. This doesn't sound too dominant yet, does it? Well, in the playoff, everything changed. Jones regained his confidence to play very well, while his opponent, Al Espinoza, fell apart. By the end of the 36-hole playoff, Jones had won by an unbelievable 23-shot margin and had silenced any doubters of his greatness. Rory McIlroy, 2011 U.S. Open In April 2011, a dominant Rory McIlroy performance seemed to be a long way off. McIlroy was coming off of an embarrassing collapse in the fourth round of that year's Masters, where he held a four-stroke lead in the third round before a final round of 80 to finish way back in 15th place. Little did McElroy know that he was only a couple of months off from one of the most dominant performances in golf history. At the 2011 U.S. Open, played at Congressional Country Club in Maryland, McElroy got back to the level of golf that had him in the driver's seat during the first three rounds of the Masters. McElroy shot a first round 65 to take a three-stroke lead and held the lead wire to wire throughout the tournament. While his first round was the best round of McElroy's U.S. Open, he was under par for every round en route to a 72-hole score of 268 and a stunning score of 16 under par. This put him eight strokes ahead of Jason Day in second place. Both his 72-hole score and his total under par were the best of all time at the U.S. Open and were only two of the 11 U.S. Open records that he set on the weekend. The dominant win came as a surprise to some, given the mental toll that the Masters debacle had on McElroy's mental state. But as McElroy said immediately after the tournament, I felt like I got over the Masters pretty quickly. I kept telling you guys that, and I don't know if you believed me or not. But here you go. Nice to prove some people wrong. Jack Nicholas, 1965 Masters. Tiger Woods' 1997 Masters victory is often cited as the most dominant performance in the tournament's storied history, at least by those especially familiar with the modern game. 
There was another Masters performance, which changed the golf world forever, though, Jack Nicklaus's 1965 win in one of the most stacked fields ever. Nicholas, only 25 years old in April 1965, had already won a Masters tournament in 1963 and two other majors along with that. Even so, he was still one of several great players who could compete for or win a tournament on any given weekend. In fact, he was tied for the lead alongside the other two members of the Big Three in Arnold Palmer and Gary Player after the second round. In his autobiography, Nicholas wrote that easy hole locations combined with ideal scoring conditions enabled the boys to make mincemeat of the course. It was Nicholas who would ratchet up the intensity in later rounds, though, using long drives that weren't seen to that point in golf to enable easy approach shots. Augusta co-founder Bobby Jones was so floored by Nicholas's performance that he declared, he plays a game with which I am not familiar. Nicholas dominated the last two rounds, shooting the then course record with a 64 in the third round and a 69 in the final round to win the tournament with an unheard of score of 17 under par. Arnold Palmer and Gary Player finished tied for second, but they were both a distant eight strokes back. Tiger Woods, 2000 US Open. Yeah, we already saw Tiger Woods on this list, but his 1997 Masters victory wasn't even his most dominant performance in a major tournament. At the 2000 US Open, which was the 100th edition of the tournament, Woods turned in what is without a doubt the most dominant performance in major golf history. At Pebble Beach, one of the US's most iconic courses, Woods led wire to wire. His first round of 65 was only good enough for a one-shot lead, but his lead widened to six in the second round as the rest of the field succumbed to difficult scoring conditions. After the third round, there were no longer any players under par except Tiger, sitting at eight under par. And after the final round, Woods was an unbelievable 15 strokes ahead of the second-place golfers Miguel Angel Jimenez and Ernie Els, with a score of 12 under par. No one was under par except Tiger due to the tough conditions. It's safe to say that the other golfers were taken aback by the dominance Tiger displayed, as L said, before we went out, I knew we had no chance. We've been talking about him for two years. I guess we'll be talking about him for the next 20. When he's on, we don't have much of a chance. In the process, Tiger became the first player ever in the US Open to finish at double digits under par. He also set the lowest score ever at the US Open with the 72 hole 272, which even beat scores of several golfers on shorter or easier courses. Tiger, though, only cared about one thing, winning. After the tournament, he said, records are great, but you don't really pay attention to that. The only thing I know is I got the trophy sitting right next to me. That mentality is why he's the greatest golfer of all time. So what do you think about our list of the most dominant major performances of all time? Did we miss any of the best performances ever? Do you think that we'll see anything like this in the future? Be sure to leave us a comment with what you think down below. Make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications so you can watch our latest content updates as soon as they drop. We'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.